Intersex is a term used to describe individuals who are born uh, with the variations in sex uh, characteristics that do not fit typically male or female. So these guys, you, uh, these are people you can't describe either female or male at that particular point. These uh, variations, like I've, I've explained, they come in, uh, in terms of chromosomes, a different variation in chromosomes, gonads, hormones, or the genitals. Intersex traits may be apparent at birth, uh, during puberty, and also later in life, uh, and sometimes they are not physically apparent uh, at all. So intersex is a very common thing in, in uh, our population. Uh, because uh, when we, we look at the numbers, uh, we have like uh, one, one to two percent of uh, every population uh, of the population as the, they are intersex people. So one to two, uh, if you are, a, you are a million population, we have one, uh, one to two percent of that, of that one million or two million becoming the or they are the, uh, the intersex at that particular point. So this is a very common, uh, common, uh, uh, the very common uh, link of a population, which uh, we give is very key. And like you've said, we have uh, because because uh, these are people you can't do not uh, fit typically to be defined as male or female at birth, it's because of the chromosomes uh, different variations gonads, hormones, or the genitals at that particular point. On the understanding of the intersex, biological diversity is very important. Intersex naturally occur in, uh, uh, are naturally occurring in, uh, in humans, reflecting the diversity of sex development. It encompasses uh, various, uh, the various uh, wide area, uh, wide uh, quite uh, encompasses a wide range of conditions. So number two is the chromosomal uh, variation. Like I said, the XX uh, variation, like in hormones, we have the XX coming up and XX uh, and uh, XY coming up to 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 show the the same. So what, sometimes it takes have a typical chromosome pattern, such as uh, what you call uh, clean filter. Uh, uh, syndrome that's now when we go to genetics or when we study the genes we have what you call Klinefelter syndrome where we have XXY uh, so or, or what you call Turner syndrome where we have X and also zero at that particular point so hormones differences in the intersex we have variation in hormonal levels and uh, all responses to hormones can also result in the intersex uh, traits. So also on the anatomical variation, uh, this may include the genitalia, where you get that uh, sometimes the ladies have very big clitoris, like a, or they may have that developed uh, clitoris like a penis at that particular point, or the reproductive organ. Some reproductive organs may be there or may not be there, and they can also be not be functional or may be functional at that particular point. So anatomically, the genitalia, the reproductive organs, don't fit typically the definition of a male or a female because you may find the lady, uh, look, the genitalia looks like a girl, but you can find that inside you don't have even have a uterus, or they have both openings, or they don't have one opening. So these uh, anatomically variations can come up in the terms of intersex. That's why it's very important during the birth of a child, the healthcare provider should be sensitized to identify these things very well because uh, gender assignment on the, in terms of birth is very critical at that particular time of birth. On me medical and uh, social consideration, medical interventions, historically medical professionals often performed surgeries on intersex infants and children to make their bodies conform to the typical male or female norms. This uh, practice has been widely been criticized and many advocate for delaying any and, surgical, any and urgent medical interventions until the individual can participate in decision making. So that is also the process which has been there. 
when you get uh, long, uh, sometimes back when you you get born and the, you, uh, the health care provider could not define your gender very well, they could decide which gender you can take easily so that you get nurtured at that particular point. But now we have advocacy on decision making. If it is not very urgent, it's illegal to make one or assign one agenda from that as a medical perspective so that uh, they make the, the decision making for an individual on which gender to take is upon uh, an individual to decide what kind of gender she or he is going to take. On healthcare, intersex individuals may require specialized medical care which should be provided with sensitivity and respect for unique needs and also identities. On social and psychological aspects, identity and expression is number one. So intersex individuals may identify uh, as female uh, uh, or as male or as both or as neither or in another way entirely uh, or in uh, another way entirely. Gender identity is separate from biological sexual uh, characteristics. So that these are the kind of mix we get with the intersex and that is what we should always understand on social and psychological uh, aspects for the intersex. Support and advocacy. Support from family, friends and community is very crucial. Advocacy, advocacy organizations work to protect the rights of the intersex people, promote understanding and also provide the resources uh, for them. On matters education, raising awareness about intersex variation can help, uh, can help uh, reduce uh, the stigma and also discrimination and fostering a more inclusive society. So the kids in school should be sensitized uh, on their, and all the become aware of the intersex among them because we say like uh, one to two percent of the population are the intersex uh, in, a, in, in a lot of variation so that we avoid the stigma and also discrimination so that we can also foster the inclusivity in our society. On legal and human rights, these people who are intersex, they have uh, their rights and also they are humans and that is advocated by, especially in Africa, we believe on WHO, World Health Organization, to run, which protects the human rights and also the legal processes in uh, every country and the constitutions which protect the human rights. So part of it is about the intersex. So on legal, uh, legal uh, protections, intersex individuals should be protected from discrimination and have their rights to bodily autonomy the privacy and the informed consent should be upheld where legal recognition of intersex people can vary from country uh, to country. Kindly in, in the comment below let me know how you recognize the intersex in your country with the law in, in the, the law of the country so that we get to share and also understand how we are referring on with the intersex people uh, from in your region and in terms of legal protection. On human rights advoc advocacy, organiz organizations like uh, United Nations and uh, various human rights groups advocate for rights of uh, intersex individuals, emphasizing the importance of consent and the prohibition of non consensual medical uh, interventions. So key points on this, intersex variations, we talk about reflect a wide range of uh, natural biological diversity, medical approach should be uh, prioritized informed consent and individual autonomy. On support, family, community and advocacy organizations play a very crucial role. Education and awareness, educating, uh, is, education is very essential for awareness over the same to reduce the stigma and promoting the acceptance of these uh, intersex people. On legal and human rights, Protecting intersex individuals from discrimination is very important where now we get uh, that uh, to ensure that the rights of these individuals are very uh, crucial. Intersex is a term that encompasses a very, very variety of uh, uh, variation in sex characteristics. Respecting the autonomy and rights of individuals, prohibiting appropriate and uh, providing appropriate medical care, uh, fostering inclusivity in the society, Education and advocacy steps are very important in uh, supporting the intersex uh, people. There is this common name called hermaphrodite. 
it used to be discussed in our biological classes. But the term hermaphrodite is, uh, has historically been used to describe individuals who possess both male and female uh, reproductive organs. However, it's essential to know that the term is outdated and uh, considered inaccurate, inaccurate and also uh, and stigmatizing in contemporary discourse. So we don't use this hermaphrodite name any longer because it is outdated and is very inaccurate and it is shows some stigma when we just talk about it. The preferred term to describe individuals with variation in sexual characteristics is the one which I've used a lot about what you call intersex. On understanding the intersex, we should know that uh, the number one, variation in sexual characteristics. The intersex individuals are born uh, with variation in sex characteristics and they do not typically uh, 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 fill in in the definition of male or female. This variation can involve chrom the chromosomes, gonads, hormones, and also uh, the genitals. So, so it goes beyond the genitals because now there are internal things which also are also accompanied by race. On natural variation, the intersex uh, is a natural and a common variation in human biology occurring in, like I've mentioned, in 1 to 2 percent of the general population. So these are the, our individuals among us and uh, there are 1 to 2 percent in a population that's a lot of people who are, exp who are experiencing this intersex thing. On the diverse and identities, intersex individuals may identify as male or female or both, neither and or an, another gender identity entirely. So gender identity is separate from biological sexual uh, characteristics. So that's the diverse part of it about the intersex. On medical and social consideration, I've uh, really stressed on this. It's about informed consent, especially for us who deal with the patients. It's very important. Medical intervention on, on intersex in the infants and children to alter their bodies to fit either male or female norms have, have been really been uh, really criticized especially with the one two population of this intersex uh, community so increasingly there is a movement toward informed consent involving the intersex individuals in decisions about uh, their bodies on healthcare intersex individuals may require specialized medical care we should be provided with sensitivity and respect for their unique needs and also identities and identities. Very important number three also is about support and advocacy. Support from family, friends, community is very crucial so that advocacy from organizations work to, uh, also at work to protect the rights of intersex people to promote understanding and provide also the resources. On legal and human rights, we talk about legal protection. So intersex uh, individuals should be protected from discrimination and have their rightly to bodily autonomy uh, where they have their privacy. Informed consented uh, should be upheld as much as possible. Legal recognition of uh, intersex people varies by country to region. So it's very important that we have these legal protections. And kindly, if you are watching me from a country which don't, don't uh, recognize the intersex people, it's very important that we come with the legal uh, processes which really get to protect these people from discrimination, bodily harm, and also privacy, and also very important about the informed consent. Like in the medical field, we believe about informed consent. You have a right to deny any medical treatment or accept it uh, with the consequences also involved. Key points about the intersex. Intersex variation, it, refl it reflects a wide range of natural uh, biological diversity. L uh, the language is a very important uh, thing which we should do very, 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 very important. Language matters on how we deal with the intersex. The term amyphrodite, like I've mentioned, is considered, uh, is considered very outdated and stigmatizing, so it is not a is, it should not be used on the intersex people. Never call someone a maphrodite. That is the, uh, discriminative. And also that person can sue you in 
some jurisdiction, jurisdiction hmm, in other constitutional levels so that you get into a problem. Direct is it jurisdiction? <laughs> I leave that one. I'll type it here. Oh, guys. So, and also when we talk about language, so I've talked about the Maphrodite. You don't use it anyhow. It's very intimidating and discriminative and it's, and it's against uh, the human rights as we can always observe. Respect and dignity is very key as a key point. Intersex deserve respect, they deserve dignity and support for the unique identities and also the experiences. Informed consent, guys. Informed consent for medical interventions should be prioritized and also individual autonomy should supersede everything. On the legal and the human rights, protecting the intersex from discrimination and ensuring their rights is, uh, is very critical so that, uh, in con so that it's important to be respectful and a very accurate language when dis discussing variation in sexual characteristics. And advocating for the rights and dignity of the intersex individuals is a very important thing so that we embrace the diversity and promote understanding and acceptance as essential steps towards creating a more inclusive and equitable uh, society. So uh, there is this common misconception or there is this common uh, talking about. I remember even when we were in primary school we used to have this kind of discussions Aside, uh, someone could say, I've seen someone has uh, these uh, two sexual organs, this uh, as this one. I don't know if you have heard of that one in your, in your, in your areas. But, you guys, welcome to our channel today. The channel is Nazvin. And today we have a very sensitive topic we are going to talk about, guys. Sit back and uh, wait. Watch. Kindly two seconds to, for you to subscribe. Uh, a lot of people are watching the channel but they are not subscribing. So I give you that five seconds for subscription guys. Kindly subscribe. Today we have a very sensitive topic and we are going to talk about a woman born with a penis. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard of that, guys? Yesterday I was talking with one of my members of the family and uh, uh, the, that member was giving me some feedback on uh, experience somewhere. And they were saying about uh, someone having two parts of the sexual organs, both male and female. And also, uh, someone else from the previous week also uh, commented over the same. So today we are going to talk about matters. Do people, uh, do we have people who are, uh, who are both organs? Uh, famously called, uh, respectively called, uh, intersex. Uh, previously crudely called hermaphrodite. But uh, the respective way of calling them is what you call intersex. So guys, our topic today is about uh, intersex. I'm going to discuss what it means, the impact it has, and also the legal aspects of the same about the intersex. So is, uh, the, 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 my, the member of the family was asking if someone can be born with a penis and the vagina at the same time. Okay. So I hope the, the member will watch this video. I did not uh, discuss a lot about it, but I've gone through a lot of research over the same. And these are the things which we've grown with, especially the matters intersex, but they are very silent, especially in the culture of the African setting. We majorly don't discuss a lot about matters related to sex and also uh, this uh, trans, uh, or what you call intersex. So. A woman born of a, uh, with a penis is often referred as a, as a, trans, a transgender uh, woman. Uh, and this means she is someone uh, whose gender identity is female, uh, despite being assigned male at birth based on their physical anatomy. 
So transgender uh, women may experience gender, uh, what you call gender dysphoria, which is distress or discomfort that arises from mismatch between their gender identity and their assigned uh, sex at birth. So guys, we've ever heard of what you call XX chromosomes, we have XY chromosomes. So when we have a mismatch over the same, and the chromosomes are the ones which determine the gender or the sex of the, our child at birth. So these things, when they get mixed up for some reasons, uh, uh, we get that uh, there is a big challenge at the, uh, which comes about uh, the things we, which we call uh, transgender, what we call uh, uh, where now differentiating the male and the female part of it becomes a very big issue at this particular point. So for better understanding and support over the same, so we have uh, issues which we must talk when we talk about what we call transgender or transsex. So uh, where now we have uh, number one aspect which we must talk about is about gender identity. It is important to understand that the gender identity is about how individuals perceive themselves and identify uh, internally. So for a transgender woman, her gender identity is always uh, female. Number two, we have what we call transition. Men transgender women undergo a process called uh, transitioning, which can include social, legal, and the medical steps to align the, the external uh, appearance and the lived experience with their gender identity. Uh, in, when we talk about transition, but we talk about social transition, this involves changing one's name, uh, pronoun, clothing, and also hairstyle. On legal transition, we have what we call, uh, this includes the one is changing one's name and the gender marker on legal documents, such as driver's license, passports, birth certificates, academic certificates, so that they match with, the, the, with that. Medical transition, this might include hormonal replacement therapy, what we call HRT, to develop uh, secondary uh, female characteristics uh, and the possibly surgical procedures such as breast augmentation or gender affirming uh, surgeries. Also, uh, on, uh, we, when we talk, we talk about the understanding of this uh, thing about uh, this, trans, uh, this uh, issue of uh, transsex, so healthcare also, access uh, to gender affirming healthcare is a very crucial uh, for well-being of transgender individuals. This includes hormonal therapy, mental health supports, surgeries, if desires, and medically appropriate. So support systems also has to be there where the family needs to support these guys. Community also is very vital by accepting and also validating the loved by the loved ones significantly impact the mental health and overall well-being of uh, transgender uh, women at this particular point. Legal protection, very important also as an aspect. So it is important to be aware of legal rights and protections are available to transgender individuals. So this can vary widely on the country and also the, re the, re the, the region. So for the, the transgender women often face significant challenges. Number one is about discrimination and stigma. They may encounter prejudice, discrimination in various aspects of life, including employment, healthcare, and social interactions. Number two is about mental health, where high rates of anxiety and depression and suicidal ideation are reported among the transgender individuals, often due to stress of living in society that not fully accept or understand uh, them. Like I've mentioned, especially in Africa, the transgender, uh, this transgender thing is not very well understood. It is now advocacy has been really been done to sensitize on how even we treat these people in the hospital setting, in the community level, at educational level, and also in all levels of life. Also, we talk about uh, access to healthcare. Barriers to accessing the competent and also respectful healthcare include lack of knowledgeable providers and also financial constraints for these guys. For violence and, uh, and safety for these guys, 
the tra especially transgender women, particularly transgender women of color, face a uh, heightened risk of violence and hate uh, crimes as a, as, a, as a whole. So guys, awareness and education, by promoting education about the transgender issues, can help the, to foster more inclusive and supportive uh, society. That's a very important thing. And through the advocacy, because with the advocacy we are supporting policies and also initiatives that protect and empower the transgender individuals, where it's very essential. This includes advocating for comprehensive health care and also anti-discriminating anti laws and also equal rights for every individual. So in, in this uh, transgender women, uh, uh, like we've said, is the, uh, the gender identity is the female despite being assigned that male at birth. So understanding acceptance and support from the society, family and friends are critical to, for her or uh, for her for the better quality of life and acceptance. So through education and advocacy, we can help create more inclusive world where transgender individuals can live authentically and also live safely as much as uh, possible. So guys, uh, that is the when we talk about uh, the transgender for female, so where now things have changed and that is the kind of support which these people need really to have. I'm going to talk about uh, something about intersex. Intersex is a term used to describe individuals who are born with variation in sex characteristics that do not fit typically a male or female. So, 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 you guys, uh, when we talk about uh, the, do the intersex have both uh, sexual organs? The intersex variations can uh, manifest in different ways and not all intersex individuals have both the sex uh, reproductive organs. The term intersex encompasses a wide range of natural variations or having uh, uh, variations in sex characteristics. Uh, characteristics. So it, like, it's not like always we say an intersex has both male and female uh, sexual organs. So the intersex encompasses a wide range of natural variations, like I'm going to mention, around it in four parts. Number one is about the gonadal variations. Is, number two is about genital variations. Number three is about uh, chromosomal variation. Number four is about hormonal uh, variations. When we talk about, about uh, gonadal or, uh, variations, some intersex individuals may have variations in the gonads. And when we talk about the gonads, we're talking about the organs that produce the gametes. So such as uh, having both ovarian and testicular tissues, so that's the gonadal variations, or what we call ovotestis, where one has the ovary and the testis at the same time. Or having one ovary and one testis. So these things are that's on the on what you call gonadal variation. On genital variations, intersex uh, variation in genitalia can include ambiguous uh, genitalia, where the external genitalia do not clearly resemble a, typ a typical male or female anatomy, or having genitalia that exhibit characteristics characteristics of both uh, sexes. So that's the genital variation. On chromosomal variation. The intersex uh, individuals may have typically chromosomal patterns such as variation in number of sex uh, chromosomes e.g. the XXY we mentioned and also the X0 which we also mentioned or other chromosomal anomalies. On hormonal variations, differences in hormonal levels or responses to hormonal hormones can result in intersex uh, traits such as a typical development of secondary uh, sexual characteristics so uh, we have also this hormonal thing where we have like somebody exhibiting as a female has beards a lot of beards somebody exhibiting as a, a man uh, has big breasts that's the secondary sexual characteristics of a female so there is that uh, interlink so it is very important to recognize that not all intersex individuals have both sex, sex, uh, sex both sets of uh, sexual organs, but we have some who have both. 
but not it's not automatic that they are going to uh, they are not going they are not going to have both of them. So intersex va uh, variations are diverse and can manifest in various combinations of biological traits, and each individual experience is very unique. So using accurate and respectable language is very important, and understanding the complexity of individual intersex variation are essential for promoting the awareness and also acceptance uh, to support for the intersex at that particular point. Sometimes we have some complications which uh, come up with uh, people experiencing the, these intersex things on the, on the four levels I've mentioned. I've mentioned of the gonado, the genital, the chromos chromosomal, and also the hormonal variations. So uh, when we talk about uh, complications associated with the uh, intersex variation can ar arise from various factors including medical interventions, psychological distress, societal stigma. So uh, when we talk about this, I'm going to mention some of the complications which people may, may develop. Especially when we talk about, number one, the medical interventions. Historically, intersex individuals, particularly the infants, like I mentioned, and children were subjected to unnecessary and uh, often irreversible medical interventions aimed to, con uh, to conform their bodies to binary notions of male or female anatomy. These interventions can lead to physical complications such as scarring, uh, loss of sensation, and the impairment of sexual function, as well as psychological harm. On the psychological distress, intersex individuals may experience psychological uh, distress, where including anxiety, uh, depression, uh, where we have also the develop low self-esteem, uh, and also discrimination, feeling of shame, and also inadequacy at that particular point. Number three is about identity struggles as a complication for the intersex people. Intersex people may struggle with their gender identity and the sense uh, of self due, uh, due to the sort of pressure to conform to binary genders because we want uh, one to be male or female as a society, but now these individuals, they are having a challenge to conform to one because of the way they are made. So they, with the, they develop as a complication, they may have identity uh, crisis at this particular point. This can lead to confusion, identity crisis, and difficulty to conforming or forming a cohesive sense of identity. Number four is about sexual functioning. Intersex variation is in reproductive anatomy and sexual uh, function can impact the way uh, they function health wise. So, individuals may experience challenges with the sexual arousal, orgasm, and intimacy, as well as concerns about fertility and also reproductive uh, options. Relationship issues intersex individuals may face challenges, challenges uh, in forming and maintaining relationships due to concerns about disclosure, rejection, and partner acceptance. So, misconceptions of lack of awareness about the intersex uh, variations among partners and society at large can contribute to the relationship uh, difficulties at that particular point. On reproductive health, some intersex variation may affect the fertility and the reproductive health. So individuals may require specialized medical care and support to address the, the reproductive concerns and make informed decisions about the family planning uh, options. Number seven is about the stigma and discrimination as a complication. So the intersex uh, individuals are subjected to stigma, uh, discrimination, marginalization, and also in various domains of life, including the healthcare, education, in terms of employment, and also in social interactions. This can be profound, uh, if, uh, can have some profound effects on the mental well-being of these individuals, and also health of these individuals and the quality of their life because they get challenges in their health health care, they get challenges in the education where they study, they get uh, challenges on the employment areas, they get also challenges on the social interactions. So these things affect their quality of their life. On the legal and social challenges, intersex individuals may face legal and social challenges related to legal recognition of their gender
because most of these legal processes, most of the time, you find if it is a form, you are told to either sign as a male or a female, and we don't have an intersex part of it. Uh, if it is a social assignments, like uh, you go to the lavatory where you get to relieve yourself, it is either male or female, we don't have the intersex part of it. So, such kind of challenges. So, we have uh, also lack of legal protection and social acceptance can exacerbate existing vulnerabilities and barriers to full participate in uh, the society of these guys. So, addressing and mitigating these complications require a holistic approach that prioritizes respect of bodily autonomy and also informed decision making, access to supportive healthcare services and social acceptance and the inclusion of intersex individuals. So promoting awareness, advocacy and the policy reforms are essential steps to creating a more equitable and supportive environment for the intersex individuals. How do you manage these kind of challenges which the intersex people uh, face? Managing intersex variations involves multidisciplinary approaches that prioritize individual autonomy, informed decision making, holistic and holistic health care. And the key aspect which we consider, like I mentioned several in this video, is about informed consent. Respect for bodily autonomy and informed decision making are very uh, paramount. So intersex individuals should uh, have the opportunity to participate in decision making about their bodies, including medical interventions, and also informed and support, a supportive manner should be involved. Comprehensive healthcare is a very key thing there. So intersex individuals may require specialized medical uh, care from healthcare providers who are knowledgeable about the intersex people, uh, variation and sensitive to their unique needs, so that they may include ongoing monitoring of their physical health, addressing reproductive and, and uh, sexual health issues by providing also uh, support for mental uh, health and also well-being. On the psychological support, intersex individuals may benefit from psychological support services including the counseling, peer support groups, and access to resources and information. These services can help address the issues related to identity, uh, self-esteem, relationship and coping, coping with the, the stigma and discrimination which is very paramount in most of the society. Also avoiding unnecessary interventions is another approach. So medical intervention aimed at altering the sexual variation should be avoided unless they are medically necessary and, undertake, and, and, and should be undertaken under full consent of an individual involved. So delayed Delaying in an urgent intervention so with, until the individual make or participate in this decision making is recommended to avoid uh, potential harm at that as, at, in the future of that individual. So education and also advocacy by promoting awareness and understanding of the intersex uh, among healthcare providers, educators, especially the teachers and the lecturers and the people who give education to these guys and also the students who share classes with these individuals is very important. So also policymakers should be involved and the general public should be, it's essential, uh, it's very essential to know about this, uh, these people so that uh, the stigma, discrimination and misconceptions can be really addressed at this level. So through advocacy uh, uh, and focusing on promoting the rights of these of individuals, dignity and the well-being of the intersex individuals, uh, and uh, challenging harmful practices and stereotypes is very key to help these guys. On legal protections, we should have uh, these guys protected against dis discrimination, and also with the human rights violations frameworks uh, should be in place to respect uh, the rights of individuals against their bodily harm. Uh, uh, bodily harm and also for autonomy, for privacy, and also non-discrimination. So le legal recognition of the gender, uh, identity, and protection from involuntary medical interventions are very important aspects of ensuring legal rights and also protection from the intersex individuals. Also research and uh, data collection is very important 
More research is needed to better understand the diverse experiences and the healthcare needs for intersex individuals. Collecting data on intersex variations, uh, creating a more inclusive and supportive society for in, uh, intersex individuals, collaboration between healthcare providers, advocates, poli uh, advocates and also policy makers, and intersex individuals themselves is essential for achieving uh, these, uh, these goals. So uh, it's very important that we get uh, to respect uh, these guys who are intersex so that uh, we may support them either including the farming them and, uh, up and uh, using a very uh, 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 to avoid using uh, pathologizing language and over holistic care and address physical and psychological and social and uh, social aspects of their health at that particular point. So these are those are very important aspects about the intersex people, and uh, we want to say uh, as an individual we want to respect these guys uh, because uh, this uh, we have we we are we have shared a lot of information on this, and that uh, is very important that uh, intersex variation encompasses a wide range of natural biological diversity in sex characteristics characteristics that do not fit male or female and we should not force the individual to be male or female at this particular point. And these people, they face a lot of issues like stigma, discrimination, distress, uh, they have uh, fertility issues at a particular point, but uh, they need our support through our legal framework and also uh, as human beings as uh, the, in, the right, in their Bill of Rights so that we get uh, to, help, to help them. So. Guys, we should promote uh, acceptance, advocacy for the rights and the well-being of the intersex people, uh, to, uh, which are very essential steps towards uh, a more just and a compassionate world for all. So guys, the channel is in Asvin. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe. This way, we get to share matters medical in a very simple language, matters such as intersex, like the one we have done today. Guys, by liking the video, you get YouTube to recommend our video to the larger population so that matters like this one can reach a larger population. Guys, isn't that very important? Can you like the video, share it widely, give a nice comment below, and for any support, we have uh, uh, our, our details in the channel. Uh, in channel details, kindly you can share your support so that we take this channel to the next video. Guys, we love you very much and also uh, peace, welcome to the next one. Yes, done. It's the director. <laughs>